Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The Suleiman University Divinity School has been a vessel of God's blessings through the years. As we enter our 100th year of faithful service, we pay tribute to our four parents, the many servant leader teachers who have shaped what and who we are today, a center for theological education, and more than that, a koinonia led by Christ's teachings that continues to provide a space for growth, learning, and nurture. Layag means to sail and to venture into the open sea with the aid of the wind that cannot be seen. And so we sail, journeying with the steadfast belief on the unseen powers of the divine, embracing fully the knowledge that the Spirit inhabits everything that we have set to do. The Spirit is also our breath, and for centuries our breath has transformed into powerful testimonies of praise and worship through the gift of music that has become an integral part of our journey as a community. These melodies and songs from the Spirit have beautiful ways of telling stories that evoke our history of joys, struggles, breakthroughs, questions, discoveries, creativity, and perseverance. We are joined by choirs from near and far as God sails ways through the many places of worship and fellowship that form the Church of Christ. We thank all of those who have shared their voice and gifts to celebrate this milestone. And we thank God for the majesty of the sail that has brought us into our 100th year of faithful service. Padayon sa paglayag.
you just heard, Onward Christian Soldiers, was played during the first graduation exercises of Silliman Bible School in December of 1922. But the classes actually began 18 months earlier in June of 1921, a century ago this month. The graduation was held at the assembly hall by the water, now considered as a historical treasure we call Silliman Hall. The first dean of the Bible school was an accomplished scholar and experienced Bible school administrator. He was from the American Board of Foreign Mission, the Reverend Irving M. Chan. He was joined by his wife, Mary, a gifted musician, who also became the first faculty of the school. Reverend Channon considered the Bible school as an embodiment of Silliman's ideals to train and mold the character of the youth that come to her doors. The next anthem is a testament to the Channons who demonstrated their deep faithfulness to the ministry of Christian education and formation.
Much has been written about the pivotal role of the visionary Reverend Frank D. Lobach from the Congregational Mission in Mindanao who proposed and worked hard to convince church leaders of the need to establish a ministerial training program for the Visayas and Mindanao evangelists. This partnership between the Presbyterians and the Congregationalists would continue to thrive through the years. In the 1930s, the Silliman Institute trustees approved the granting of a Bachelor of Theology degree. A few years later, the Women's Bible Training School, founded by Isabel Fox in Cagayan de Oro, decided to merge with the Silliman Bible School, forging their resources to offer a deaconess training course, which produced five women graduates immediately. Silliman Institute earned the status of a full-fledged university in 1939, owing substantively to the College of Theology's robust contributions to the library collection of books. From our siblings in UCCP Cagayan de Oro, here is a favorite anthem that honors the strength and courage of the early leaders who worked tirelessly to bring their vision of God's work into fruition. Before 
shaken and forced in shambles for the first half of the 1940s. In Dumaguete City, the loving home of Silliman Bible School, named after the channels, was forcibly turned into the headquarters of the Japanese Kempetai that perpetuated unspeakable horrors in the lives of our communities and terrorized our people. Some of the mission personnel and faculty were imprisoned. Some had evacuated when an opportunity opened, and yet some took to the hills to pursue pockets of schools in the jungle, protected by the locals as they operated below the radar of the Japanese forces. In those precarious times, what dreams visited them at night? Through the following hymn, we can hear the prayers of those who had undergone extreme hardship and turmoil, seeking help to bear the strain of the toil and suffering. But amidst the rubble, new initiatives began to take root for church unity. In 1948, after intense conversations, prayers, and negotiations, the union of five Protestant denominations was formalized and led to the birthing of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines, with Christ as its head and cornerstone binding all the church in one. Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil and the fret of care. Help me the slow. 
communities were reeling from the war, God's work continued to grow and expand. The fruits of its labors blossoming through the 1950s. During this decade, Woodward Hall, the school's dormitory for men, was built. And a few years after, the rural home center and kindergarten buildings followed suit. With the edifices that arose, so did mission standards the push for excellence translating to the upgrading of academic work, among others. All of these are testament of God's abundant provisions and grace. All the way from Dubai, our siblings join us by declaring God's amazing grace through music.
that continued to shape things to come. In 1961, the first pastor's annual convocation, the precursor to the church workers' convocation, was organized as part of the continuing education of the alumni and church workers. The Chapel of the Evangel was constructed and the college was renamed to the current name, the Divinity School of Silliman University. In 1965, a well-loved Filipino pastor and scholar, Reverend Dr. Proceso U. Udarbe, succeeded Dean Paul Lobby, heralding a paradigm shift, one that affirmed the Filipino leadership in our academic and church institutions. Dr. Udarbe ushered in efforts towards Filipinization and professionalization. He also broadened institutional linkages by joining the newly established Southeast Asia Graduate School of Theology. And by God's design, the Ministry of Liturgical Music began to witness the dawning of Filipino creative fervor. It is only fitting that we lift the life and legacy of Dr. Elena Makiso, a prolific hymn writer who wrote Cebuano hymns for the Visayas and Mindanao congregations and who passionately served as church musician and as faculty of the Divinity School. Here is one from her more than 100 compositions in a guitar rendition, followed by a piece included in Alawiton sa Pagduo, edited by Makinso. Oh, 
was marred by the reign of political suppression and social unrest with the imposition of martial law throughout the country in 1972 by then President Ferdinand Marcos. Silliman University was not spared from the terror that followed suit. Some of its faculty and students were arbitrarily arrested, interrogated, and detained. Clergy were not exempt, including then Silliman University Associate Pastor Reverend Joel Tabada, an alumnus of the Divinity School who was arrested and detained for three months. Amidst this tumultuous period, the Divinity School had also undergone a review and revamp of its curriculum twice within this decade. The second one engaged the voices of the faculty two bishops, a moderator, and pastors from both urban and rural settings, establishing a consultative and democratic space for dialogue that would inform the curriculum offerings of the Divinity School. The next song by Reverend Joel and Grace Tabada reflect the deep lament of our Filipino church workers in those dark times. And despite moments of vulnerability, the ray of hope shines through as the church continued to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. My uh, countrymen, as of the 21st of uh, this month, I signed Proclamation Number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. I assure you that I am utilizing this power for the proclamation of martial law vested in me by the Constitution for one purpose alone, and that is to save the Republic and reform our society. I have had to use this constitutional power in order that we may not completely lose the civil rights and freedom which we serve. I am confident that with God's help we will attain our dream of a reformed society, a new and brighter world. Stood on why, but I'm 
In the 1980s, dissenting discourses animated the halls of the Divinity School. And amidst this contesting ideas among faculty and students, the school produced substantive liturgical materials as part of the work of the Divinity School's rural publications headed by Reverend Elisito Dumalaga. Pushing liturgical renewal efforts was the Reverend Lydia Nigidula, who helped produce Bible study materials for the churches. It was also during this decade that the Divinity students, through its choir, traveled overseas to Singapore. There was something else that erupted during this decade. The world was awed by the Filipinos' peaceful demonstration of defiance to many years of authoritarian rule and the arrogance of power. The year was 1986, and the years leading to the People Power Revolt was a testimony of how a broad movement for social change can lead to the ouster of a tyrant and make a difference in the world. To capture the deep yearning that led to an outpouring of love and resistance in the parliament of the streets, here is a rendition of the iconic kundiman Bayanko, a song of deep love for the motherland that has been embedded in every freedom-loving Philippine then followed by a prophetic church song, Atong Nasod Nagkinahanglan, a compelling call for selfless commitment by God's servant leaders. Paisa upan Atong buli ka Nang pagkabot sa gitinguha Sa katiling man Kay kabubot on sa Diyos amahan Oh, my God. 
of the 90s is the contextualization of theological education, which led to another revision in the curriculum, including the creation of a new program in liturgy and music at the Divinity School. During this term, an audiovisual classroom and recording studio were set up, and various partners enabled the Divinity School to generate resources to subsidize the annual church workers' convocation and to support its students through scholarship, especially those who come from difficult circumstances. Ecumenism also thrived between UCCD, the Iglesia Filipina Independiente, and the Roman Catholic Church, enriching the life of the seminary students. Former UCCP General Secretary Bishop Fermi Kamba became dean in 1997 and rallied financial support for the restoration of Channel Hall to its original architectural design. It is the spirit of the Salu Salu, of gathering people at the table of the Lord to cultivate fellowship and to offer various gifts for the fulfillment of God's work that was at the center of this time. Oh, do not be 
The millennium brought renewed energy and vitality. In 2001, Silliman University celebrated its centennial anniversary, drawing inspiration and support from its expanding network of alumni and institutional partners. It was a decade of harvest, with publications that emerged from the Divinity School's old and current faculty. God With Us, Reflections on the Theology of Struggle in the Philippines by Rev. Dr. Levi Orajon. Biblical Foundations of the Faith by Rev. Dr. Proceso Utarbe. Reading and Hearing the Old Testament in Philippine Context by Rev. Dr. Noriel C. Capulo. Hymnal of a Faith Journey and its Cebuano Translation Alawiton sa Panaw sa Pagtuo by the UCCP Hymnal Committee and the Divinity School led by Grace Roble Tabada. During this period, the university installed its first female dean for the Divinity School, Dr. Muriel Orevillo Montenegro, and a tripartite covenant cemented the completed union of the Silliman University the Divinity School, and the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. This decade also witnessed the resurrection of Panikanhong Magdudula, the seminary's cultural group that was initiated by Dr. Makiso. In one of its cultural presentations that tackled gender-based violence and the church, students were encouraged to compose original songs on the theme. The next song, is a take on the life of a pastor, composed in 2002 by Reverend Anne Cadile and Dominga Tabada, and Gary Granada's Buhay na Kasiyasiya. Bye. 
on theological education in Asia brought together educators from Taiwan, Korea, Philippines, Indonesia, and USA. The school also cemented its partnership with the United Evangelical Mission, or UEM, through the Diaconic Management Program, as well as the UEM Mission House that promoted South-to-South -South faculty exchanges. The Divinity School hosted a General Assembly in 2010, 
for one of its faculty members, Reverend Ruel Norman Maritza, was elected as the General Secretary. In 2011, the Church Workers' Convocation gathered to mark its 50th year of continuing theological education and fellowship. This period also witnessed the completion of the McKinley Hall renovation. We close the decade to a difficult and unfathomable reality that confronted not only the seminary, but the whole world. On top of worsening human rights situation in the country, the onset of COVID-19 that quickly turned into a pandemic forced the school to rethink, to pivot, to explore new ways of being a community for learning, support, and ministry. But despite these challenges, we shall continue to honor God and to celebrate and to harvest. The next song is a product of a graduate of a Bachelor of Theology, major in Liturgy and Music, June Grande, who integrated a Manobo-inspired musical motif in this song extolling God's love and care.
Lord's Prayer invokes for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. The work on the ground and among communities rely on God's servant leaders. It has been a blessing to listen to stories of how Divinity School alumni continue to live out this calling, enabling their churches and communities to live life fully and with dignity, befitting of God's vision and creation. Many of the alumni now serve as church workers of the UCCP in its churches and various ministries. This rousing song, Bagong Langit, composed by Ernest Hope Tinambakan, the son of Divinity School alumni, the Reverends Himayas and Marilu Tinambakan, was used for the UCCP anniversary in 2014.
gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The voyage of 100 years took us to the seas of calming stillness and waters embattled by stormy winds, through long dark nights and into the certainty of the breaking of dawn. It had gone through chains of names, revamp of curriculum, growth of infrastructure, political vicissitudes, and challenges including this pandemic but our resolve is unwavering we shall continue to sail forward with our trying god leading the rudder mindful of the divine covenant that we embrace as christians all to love god with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself we thank you all for celebrating with the Divinity School family. And now, as a faithful community, we humbly honor those who have served the Divinity School of Suleiman University as God's servant leaders through the years in this campus by the sea. Bye. 
Lord.